It's an indisputable law of nature. For an animal to live, it needs to eat, often other animals. So the race begins, predator versus prey. A high stakes game of hide and seek. Where the hunter uses strength, stealth, speed, or smarts against its luckless target. For predators, that's what it takes to survive the wild. Beneath the calm surface, the ocean teems with predators each with its own deadly strategy. Dolphins, plying the water in large social pods, are famously smart and playful mammals. When it comes to predation, the pod's strategies are no laughing matter. On the east coast of South Africa, on the Akulhas bank, the dolphins get down to business. Each year, between May and July, pods gather to take part in a dazzling natural phenomenon. South Africa's Great Sardine Run. Following the seasonal cold current, the spawning sardines come together in their millions, forming shoals of up to nine miles long and a hundred feet deep. In pursuit, individual dolphin pods merge to form megapods 18,000 strong. But they're not the only predators with a taste for sardines. The commotion draws sharks from below, while Cape gannets follow the action from above, plunging after the sardines like fish-seeking missiles. They can hit the water head-on at close to 60 miles per hour thanks to their shock-absorbing skulls.
Predators will shadow the sardines almost every inch of their perilous 750-mile journey. The feast won't last long, so the dolphins feed as efficiently as possible. In teams, they flank the sardines into densely packed bait balls. Then they take turns plowing through, gobbling as many as they can. By corralling the mass of sardines into shallow water, the predators limit their escape route. But the frenzied, shimmering bait ball makes it hard for the dolphins to focus on their target. As the two-month sardine run ends, the megapod disbands and the dolphins return to their smaller groups. When the sardines return next year, so will the dolphins. While dolphins fly through the water, further inland, another predator floats in the air. The kestrel. About the size of a pigeon, Australia's smallest falcon uses an extraordinary technique to snag its quarry. Earning it the nickname wind hoverer. In central Australia, Alice Springs provides kestrels with plenty of hunting opportunities. From her perch, this female uses her keen eyesight to scan the landscape. It's been a tough day and her search yields nothing. Exhausted, she moves on desperate to make a kill. Back at her nest, her chicks await their mother's return.
She managed to scrounge an earthworm, but it's nothing more than a snack. She needs to keep looking. Her chicks depend on her for four months after they hatch, and she can't let them down. At last, she spots something moving. A mouse. No time to waste, she drops in for the kill. But she fumbles the strike and it escapes. She won't let it get away that easily. Ever patient, she takes to the air to perform her signature hunting move. If need be, she can remain pinned to the air even in 12 miles per hour winds. By extending the tips of her wings, she flies into the wind, cancelling her forward momentum and allowing her to hover. All the while, she makes micro-adjustments to compensate for fluctuations in the breeze. She changes altitude but she's not letting the mouse's burrow out of her sight. When the mouse appears, she makes her move. To the mouse, it's like she appeared out of thin air. No escape this time. At last, the kestrel can feed her hungry chicks. While the kestrel terrorizes mice in Australia, over in Africa lives a predator that terrifies just about everyone, the Nile crocodile. These cold-blooded reptilian strategists are the apex predators of their range. Despite the name, Nile crocodiles don't just stick to the Nile. They rule many of the continent's waterways, including South Africa's Sabi River. In this period of extreme drought along the Sabi, food scarce. But the Nile crocodile shrugs it off. In his burrow along the riverbank, 
He enters a form of hibernation, waiting for life to return to the river. He can stay dormant for up to two years and awaken with a mean appetite. Small fish and birds don't interest him. He's hankering for a pig meal. Fortunately, large game, and lots of it, is coming his way. Migrating wildebeest are heading toward the river. For them, the sabi is an obstacle in the way to better grazing grounds. And to cross it, they'll need to pay a toll to the crocodiles. With just its eyes and nostrils above the waterline, the crocodile stakes his ambush position along the water's edge. Submerging completely, they glide into place and wait motionless for hours until the perfect moment to strike. Whether the wildebeest know about the danger or not, there's no way around it. Meanwhile, the croc joins his comrades to welcome their guests with open jaws. No one's going home hungry today. While he prefers to strike at the water's edge, during the stampede, crocs change tactics to hunt midstream, where they have the advantage. Usually. If he can't catch a wildebeest, maybe a zebra will do. No luck there either. But now, another wildebeest. He'll try to hold it under in his jaws and drown it. He's joined by the others. Together, they share the spoils. Because their teeth are better at grabbing prey than chewing it, Group feeding allows the crocs to use each other as leverage to tear off bite-sized pieces. They make the most of the feast while it lasts. And then make do until migration time comes again.
The croc may be the apex predator in Africa's rivers, but the ocean boasts a predator poster girl all its own. The great white shark. These highly adapted hunters are the largest predatory fish on the planet. Just the sight of their gray fin cutting through the water strikes terror in humans and marine life alike. but most of their victims never see them coming. This sly carnivore prefers to attack from below. The Southern Ocean bordering South Australia is home to a healthy population of great whites These coastal waters provide plenty of dining opportunities because they're also popular nesting grounds for sea lions. This colony basks on the shore and in the shallows out of the Great White's reach. For now, but they'll need to enter open water to feed. When threatened, an easygoing sea lion might be able to outswim a great white, but just barely. If the shark hopes to catch one, she must strike her nimble prey unaware, coming at it from the depths. The great white's darker top blends with the ocean waters, making this giant fish almost impossible to see from above. With her sharp eyesight, keen sense of smell and electroreception, the shark locks in on her target and readies herself for the attack. The silent shark has the unsuspecting sea lions in sight. Surging upward from the depths, she makes her move. Just before impact, her eyes automatically roll back for protection. And then...
she'll dine well. But with her high energy hunting strategy, it won't be long before she works up an appetite again. The shark's deep water ambush strategy succeeds around half the time. But even prey that escapes can suffer devastating injury. Despite having few natural predators, the great white is classed as a vulnerable species. For all its might, its life in the ocean is often more at risk than some of the species it preys upon. While the great white strikes terror off the coast, deep inside the rainforest, a tiny hunter outwits its prey just as stealthily. The Porsche spider. This jumping spider, considered to be the most intelligent of the arachnids, plots strategies to snare its dangerous quarry, other, dumber spiders. In Queensland, Australia, the Cape York Peninsula is the hunting ground of the cunning Porsche. Porsche's exceptional eyes lock onto a potential meal. A green jumping spider. Moving with calculated nonchalance, the Porsche patiently draws in. Disguising her approach with an irregular, jerky gait, the Porsche looks more like a flapping leaf than a fellow spider. She'll even risk losing sight of her target in order to get as close as possible without being detected. At last, she strikes and fails and falls. But she'll learn from her mistake and refine her strategy. The next night finds her again, stalking the forest. A cross spider much larger than the Porsche would make a great meal, if she can manage it. Any miscalculation could cost her her life. This time she nails it, holding tight long enough to deliver her deadly venom.
The Porsche's ability to learn from her experience makes her a potent predator. Every kill adds to her assassin's arsenal. Like most spiders, baby Porsche spiders get no help from their mothers. It's make it or break it from the moment they hatch. Only the smart ones survive. Before long, she's ready to eat again and returns to the hunt. This water spider doesn't know it yet, but she's on the menu. The Porsche takes advantage of her potential dinner's bad eyesight to move in close. But the water spider compensates with fast reflexes. The Porsche will keep that in mind the next time she sees one. While the Porsche spider creeps around on Queensland's leaves and twigs, down on the ground crawls another unshakable predator. The monitor lizard. Nearly 80 species of monitors live throughout the world. Australia might have more than its share with over 20 species. Down under, monitors are called goannas. Being lizards, monitors are literally cold-blooded killers. Australia's largest, the Parenti, can reach over eight feet. He's not fussy about what he eats. Anything from eggs to insects to small birds and mammals. In Queensland's Conondale National Park, a goanna will go on a hunting expedition. Swaggering through the eucalyptus forest, he's after something delicious. His flickering tongue sweeps chemical signals from the air toward a scent organ in his mouth. It guides him to his prey. He sniffs out a possum. But height won't help the little marsupial. The monitor makes sure he's found the right tree, then up he goes.
Monitors have higher metabolic rates than other lizards, making them unusually active for a cold-blooded predator. Once they're well fed, they can live off their food for weeks without the need to eat. As the monitor closes in, the possum retreats to her nest. While she could easily escape through the canopy, her young cannot. She does her best to defend them. Her aggressive display finally drives the monitor off. Or does it? He's invested too much energy to give up so easily. Mother Possum puts up a vicious fight, but she can't penetrate his hide as he devours her babies. The mother has lost everything. While the predator takes a rest before hunger drives him to hunt again. Some young animals need care and protection. And some absolutely do not. Evolution can produce some surprising survival strategies. Most caterpillars are perfectly happy to eat the leaves of the plants they were hatched on. They are voracious vegetarians, usually. On the isolated islands of Hawaii, a species of caterpillar has developed a taste for flesh. Everywhere else in the world, members of the moth genus Upathesia stick to the salad course, but not here. On the Hawaiian island of Oahu, 
The National Wildlife Refuge is home to several species of carnivorous Epithecia caterpillar. Within the forest, this caterpillar appears to be eating leaves. But in truth, she's setting her trap, shaping the leaf to capture what she really craves. The caterpillar chews away part of the leaf, anchors her hind legs to the stem, and waits. Her body is coated with sensitive hairs, and when unsuspecting prey walks over one of these hair triggers, she strikes. Immobilizing her prey in her vice-like pincers, she devours her victim alive. In the insect-filled forest, the caterpillar has no troubles attracting prey. There's never a shortage of fruit flies, the Epithecia caterpillar's bread and butter. The flies may be tiny and fast, but not fast enough. Eighteen of the 20 caterpillar species native to Hawaiian islands have evolved into carnivorous predators. Some epithecia, rather than looking like leaves, masquerade as twigs. As efficient and deadly as these ambush predators are, what's truly remarkable is that this is just one phase of its life cycle. After the caterpillar has eaten its fill of insects, it will cocoon itself and emerge as an unremarkable moth. On the open grasslands of the African savanna, where herds of grazers dominate the landscape, death can rush in on graceful cat paws, courtesy of the cheetah. But the fastest land animal needs more than speed to make it out here. She needs strategy.
In Mozambique's Gorongosa National Park, she'll put that strategy to the test to feed her family. Her cubs are old enough to follow her, but too young to hunt. It's been a while since they last had a decent meal. She's on the lookout for game, but also for predators. She's only as fast as her slowest cub. When she reaches a hunting spot, she'll hide the cubs and carry on alone. She closes in on a mixed herd of zebra and wildebeest, pacing the periphery. She scans for the herd's most vulnerable members. Concealing herself, she'll crouch low and creep in, closing the gap between her and her target. Lacking the bulk of larger predators, she depends on the element of surprise to make a quick kill. Dashing from zero to nearly 60 miles per hour in just over three seconds, she can easily outrun her prey. But taking it down without injuring herself is the hard part. It demands timing and precision. Even when she makes her catch, she doesn't necessarily make the kill. Because she depends on speed, any injury that slows her down could mean starvation. So she retreats from conflict. She returns to her cubs empty-handed. With so many mouths to feed, she needs to rest up and try again, choosing a less ambitious target. A newborn wildebeest calf fits the bill. There's no stalking now, just a desperate dash through the herd. The cubs will finally get fed. But mother has to work quickly before other predators or scavengers steal her prize. The meal will satisfy the family for a little while. Then soon the mother will be on the hunt again. If all goes well in about a year and a half, their cubs will be self-sufficient, expert hunters on their own. Even for animals at the top of the food chain, survival isn't a birthright. Large and small, for predator and for prey, making it in the wild depends on innate skill, plenty of practice, and sometimes sheer luck.